Good morning. Welcome back. Welcome to the second day of the main program of the 2022 Embedded Vision Summit. I hope you enjoyed the summit yesterday. Uh, I made some really interesting new connections, met some, some interesting people, and connected with some interesting companies. And that felt really nice after not seeing many people in th actual three-dimensional physical space for a long time. Uh, I also learned a lot, and I had my, my thinking challenged in, in several conversations and sessions yesterday, which I think is always very healthy. For example, uh, I was surprised to learn from Josh Morris's presentation yesterday that although audio and video are very different data types, there's an awful lot of similarities in how they're processed with deep neural networks. And often audio is rendered into images and then images pass through DNNs to understand what's going on in the audio. Um, also some differences between how audio and video are processing, but I think uh, to me at least surprising number of uh, similarities. From Robert Lagunier, I learned about different approaches to sensor fusion. Uh, we hear a lot about sensor fusion, but this was the first time I really kind of understood some of the important trade-offs, in particular between trying to fuse the sensor, the data from different types of sensors early in the process, in the processing pipeline, versus later, once some uh, processing and cognition has been applied. Uh, very interesting, insightful presentation. Uh, from Federico Perazzi, I learned how knowledge distillation works in deep neural networks, something I'd heard about but not really understood, um, realizing that now, now realizing that this is a very powerful technique for model compression. And the most mind-blowing revelation for me yesterday was from Dean Kamen, uh, who told me that a consortium of companies that he's leading is developing manufacturing processes to manufacture replacement organs for humans at scale, and that they're using computer vision as the key sensing technology in these manufacturing processes because they need to monitor how the tissues are growing, uh, but they need to do it in a sterile, contactless way. They expect to be manufacturing organs by the end of this year, which I'm still having a hard time getting my head around. And I told Dean that if I'd heard this from just about anyone else on the planet, I'd think, nah. But from Dean, it's probably real. 